PTC Creole Parametric 3.0 Lesson 13, Part 3. We left off with the creation of the socket head cap screw and the holes and threaded holes that it automatically placed in the assembly. Basically what we want to do is group those together and then pattern it. And one of the things you're going to get is the pattern of everything but got to be a little bit careful here to, to finish it out and that aspect of it is that even though it gets patterned you want to make sure it patterned everything including the threaded holes etc so follow the procedure closely when you're doing it we're going to do something similar at the end here with the dowel so we'll go to first of all copying or copying and pasting special the bracket so again, if you look at here, this has all become grouped and then propagated with a reference pattern. So once that's done, all of this is locked together in a, in a large group. And we're going to go and I'm going to copy and we're going to paste special. And we're going to move and from the end here, direction reference, and we're going to go to 22 inches. Now you can look at this from another view, see it a little bit visually. We're just moving it up. Now when we do that, it's not going to create everything we need, so you have to go and check to see whether or not the holes are there, etc. This looks okay because we took everything as a group, but I also have a dowel that I put in to give you an example of using that. And let's go down here and see if we can find out which one the go that is. So basically you want to put in a dowel and only in the base plate, but you're in the assembly when you're doing this. So we'll put in another one. We'll just leave this one in here and put one in over the top kind of. And you're going to start with putting in a point and then locating that point from the two edges, two surfaces. And I'm going to put it relatively close in here, like so. Again, this is just an example. When you have a long part, turn off your spin center so that when you click with your right mouse button and you want to rotate it with your middle mouse button, I should say, that it'll lock into that particular position that you've selected. Otherwise, if you have this and you're rotating, it's rotating about the center of the whole model. In this case, it's 40 inches, so it's not going to help to use the middle mouse button to rotate it unless you make it localized, like so. So again, let's just move this over here like so, just to give you an example of what we're doing. Um, I'm just going to put in a couple of dimensions to make them e you know, a little more logical here. All right, so put in our point, okay. I have to turn on the axis and the point. And in this particular case, I could just leave that active, put an axis through it, and then normal to this, okay. And at that point, let's pattern that. And we have dimensional pattern, we have directional pattern, I think I'm just going to use direction right now. So I'm going to go from here. Just so how far. And then we're just going to drag it over to the other side. Oh, I can't drag it. I was hoping to drag it. There we go. And again, if you want to look at it just visually, we don't have to do it that perfectly. We're just doing this as an example. So there's where it is. So let's say it looks like it's going to be about 38. So we'll use 38. And again, these aren't the ones that you're going to be using. Okay, 38 over from there. And that's one direction. And our second direction is going to be from the front here. And we're just going to drag that one over like so.
So we have those as references. That's all we're going to do. Again, this is the same thing you're going to do for the for the uh, socket head. I'm sorry, the dowel. Replace these. Now, one of the things we could look at, though, when having done that, um, this pattern. Let's go back into the edit definition of it, and we're going to have two dowels, not four. So. You can turn off two of them, like so. Middle mouse button. And again, you're going to use that newly created axis and point. This time, we're going to go into Tools, and we'll go into the Dowel Pin, select the position for it. The new one we just created. And then it says select the dowel pin placement surface, which is here. You're only going to see one arrow. Okay. And open up your layout. And you can see it's a through hole. Let's go to inches and go to I can't remember which one we used. We'll use this one right here. And diameter, let's just uh, go 3 eighths, let's say. And depth, you can actually adjust this like so. Make it whatever size you want. So let's say we just go a little bit below the surface here. We can preview it as we do it. And it depends on how much you have, want to have it extend here. So let's go into um, two and a half inches and sometimes you have to redo this when you do that. And that looks a little long also. So how about one and three quarters? So it depends on how much you want it extended into the other part. If we use this as a key for a slot in a machining table, you know, we could just have to have it go down a little bit. It's your choice here. You take a look at what we suggested <clears throat> in the uh, book. All right, so the whole type, the bottom bore, press fit, so it's slightly smaller than the actual diameter, 0.375. Okay. And it looks like we didn't get the proper hole through there. And I think that's because I didn't click on that correctly. Now, again, here's one of the problems with this. This is not something I can just go in there and and rework very easily. I'm going to go in there and do this. And you can see it comes back with a traditional method of component placement in the ribbon. So I'm going to delete it. So, and I want to really take a look at, though, in the base here. Here's the base plate. So now what's going on, see? So let's try it again. So dowel pin, use the standard. We're going to use the point for its location. We're going to start here. OK, we're going to expand out. and bottom bore, it says that. We should be going here to the depth again. Press fit. Top bore. Bottom bore. Both of these should be going on. I'm not sure why I'm not getting a good preview on this one. Preview. Ah, there we go. And again, maybe I didn't check the top bore last time, make sure that was OK. Click all right. And you can see the whole one in that time. 
So I would have to take that I just created this. So my whole feature. And let's see what happens if we pattern that. We're not getting the reference pattern for some reason. So I was hoping to use the reference pattern. Let's shut that out. I've got my other items in there. Let's group this and then pattern it. I'm still not getting it. It's kind of interesting. So it's not giving me my actual pattern. I'd actually have to pattern it again using my dimensions, which I really didn't want to do. I thought I'd be able to use that reference pattern of the point. For some reason, it's not coming up. So again, with this particular case, it's not a big deal, but I would have to go in and choose whatever version it's going to be like I did last time and bring it down to the other side. Wherever it is, like around 38, I remember. And then in the other direction, And we can shut off this one and shut off this one in the front. See what happens here. And here's our other one. It's kind of on top of that one, but you can see it propagated it correctly. Let's select on it and let's let's collapse a few of these other items here so we can see this a little bit better working in the plate there. So got our pattern, got our groups. All this is showing. So when you do it in the book. I put a different size in on that one. Follow the steps closely. And you'll see that uh, I did, might have done something wrong in the demo. Here you got pattern. And what you're doing is patterning the, the uh, socket head cap screws, the uh, threaded holes in the base. You have to move those over separately. On the dowel that we just did, group these together. And pattern. Well, it looks like we did have to pattern the same way. So um, the way I demoed it was okay. Patterned it out. Take a look at one more thing here. Just make sure everything is showing up with that pattern. So this item here had to be patterned separately. And the reason for that is because it didn't move over the hole. So this looks okay here, but if you hide it, you'll see the hole's not there. So you also have to pattern the hole that's in the base plate, this one here, and it's under reference, and there's the hole. So that's one thing that you have to do. You still have to bring the, thre the hole over there. It's not a threaded hole. You have to bring that over there. Otherwise, it's not going to be, uh, the, the dowel's going to show up, but the hole's not going to show up in the plate. That's important. 
And I'm going to shut this in again. Since I'm working with an existing file I don't want to go over the top of, I'm going to erase everything in session. And then I'll open it up one more time, like so. So again, you can see the hole over here when we did it in this version. Same as on this side. But if you don't pattern that last that last set of commands, you don't use that to, to pattern this threaded, I'm sorry, the uh, dowel hole, then it's not going to show up in the base plate. So you want to make sure you do that. Last part of the lesson was to just simply create a, you can see here the uh, dependencies for it, but uh, is to create a drawing, an assembly drawing. So depending on how many, how deep you want to go into this, you'd have to put your parameters in all the uh, the two dowels, the socketed cap screws, the um, washer, and obviously the bracket and the base in order to do this correctly. And you can use the same format we created before as long as you're using the same parameters. And ask your instructor or whoever, see whether or not that's what you want to do. And then when you're done, zip the file and uh, save it or uh, email it to yourself or email it to your instructor. This completes lesson 13.